Hello everyone and welcome back to the finals of the FIDE Grand Prix 2019. Again, we are in the tie breaks. This is the, uh, well, after the two class games have been drawn, then uh, Duda took the lead by winning the first rapid game, then uh, Grishuk equalized by winning the second second rapid game, and now we enter the faster rapid games. These are the 10 minutes plus uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 minutes plus 10 seconds uh, increment, so uh, m much faster than, than the previous time format, and uh, it's just a crazy, crazy attacking game, so I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Grishuk with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, we have d5, c4, and c6 now. Uh, a, bit of, a bit of a uh, refreshment from, from the previous lines, knight f3, knight to f6, and now e3. We have e6 and bishop to d3 by Grishuk. We have knight b to d7 uh, and now b3. Uh, we have b6 uh, and now comes castles by Grishuk. We have bishop to b7, Fianchetto wing the light square bishop, bishop to b2 and now d captures on c4. We have b captures on c4 and now c5 releasing the dark square bishop so everything is, uh, you know, in order and here there is one game where knight to c3 was played but the d5 is a new move by Grishuk and again Grishuk is starting some uh, commotion right 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 from the start the black king is still in the middle of the board so naturally you want to open lines with e capture some d5 c capture some d5 and the bishop capture some d5 again Grishuk sacrifices a pawn for some uh, nice activity. He has the bishop pair still and he pushes e4. He wants to push e4, e5 and keep the king in the center of the board as long as possible. We have bishop back to c6 and now rook to e1, preparing to push e5. And here uh, you kind of you want to play knight to h5. It, it looks ugly but you have to clear the knight from, from f6 as e5 is coming. But here queen to e7 is played by Duda. He wants to castle queenside as soon as possible but uh, Grishuk has uh, something for that as well. We have knight to c3, now preparing to bring the knight over to d5. If you keep your queen and king aligned when knight to d5 comes, then it's it's just game over. So here we have queenside castle, getting the que king to safety as soon as possible, and now knight to d5, attacking. Uh, so of course you don't want to trade and open up uh, uh, the, the rook's attack to the queen. Uh, so queen back to e8, and now a4. Of course Grishuk wants to... Uh, attack on the queen side as soon as possible. We have bishop to d6, uh, and now comes bishop to a6 with check. First king to b8, and now queen to b3. Uh, saying, I don't need the e4 pawn, you can have it, I'm gonna uh, continue with my attack. Uh, Duda grabs the e4 pawn, we have knight captures on e4, uh, and now comes a5. So what do you do here? Here Duda missed an opportunity to, to slow down Grishuk's attack a bit with c4, give up a pawn, at least move the queen away from the b-file. After queen captures go queen e6, uh, have a double attack against the knight here, it would uh, it would definitely slow down uh, Sasha's attack. But here Duda went to bishop to c7 instead, adding another defender to the b6 pawn, but this creates more problems for Duda than it solves. A captures on b6, we have a captures on b6, and now bishop to b5, opening up uh, the a file for the queen, and uh, queen, queen to a4 to a7 is the idea. Also, the c6 bishop is under attack. And, uh, well, if you play something like bishop captures here, then queen captures, you're, you're getting mated here, so not something you want to do. So, Duda just moves back the bishop, bishop to b7, but now queen to a4, going for a7. Here we have queen to e6 and now comes a, a remarkable move by Grishuk. I really enjoy this move, uh, really just, just a beauty. Uh, here uh, Grishuk played, you can even pause the video and uh, maybe try and figure out what he played if you want. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So for those of you who were able to do it, if you found uh, rook to d1, that's that's an excellent move. If you found queen to a7 check, that's an excellent move. But uh, the move Grishuk played is just a beauty. Grishuk played bishop to c6, and this is just this is just a wow move, especially for such a quick game. Uh, the point is the bishop cannot be captured. If if you capture with the bishop, then the c7 bishop is no longer guarded. Queen a7 check, king c8, and queen captures on c7 is mate. But it's even nicer if the queen captures, then you no, no longer have control of the e7 square. Then it's queen a7 check, king c8, and now knight to e7, a nice smothered mate. So bishop to c6, just, just a beautiful move. Uh, so how do you defend here? Uh, well, Duda finds a very nice idea. He he vacates the c7 square for the king. He plays bishop captures on h2. Now that the king has an escape route, then queen captures on e6 uh, on c6 will be possible because there is no knight to e7 mate uh, at the end of this line because queen to c7 is just uh, king to c7 just escapes. 
Uh, so Grisho uh, captured the bishop with queen captures on c6, now offering a trade here, but of course Sasha uh, does not allow this. Uh, queen to a7 check, king to c8, and now knight to e7 check uh, with, uh, with winning the queen. Uh, although you don't really win the queen because, well, after king to c7, Sasha grabbed the queen, but now comes rook to a8, trapping, uh, trapping his queen as well. So what do you play here? Uh, Sasha played rook captures on e4, we have rook captures on a7, and now rook captures on a7. We have king captures on c6, and now just uh, rook to e7. So at the end of this uh, in entire line, <clears throat> uh, you can see that uh, Sasha is up a whole rook, and if this was any normal game, of course Duda would, would resign this, but he's fighting for the for the first place in the Fide Grand Prix. So Duda says, okay, I have two connected pass pawns here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and make something out of them, even though even though Grishuk is up a whole rook. So okay, we have rook to d8, uh, bringing the rook into the game, and now knight back knight to f3. You can always start picking up the kingside pawns. Not not much black can do about this. <clears throat> Uh, we have b5 uh, the, starting to push those past pawns and now rook captures on f7. We have b4, rook captures on g7. Duda putting uh, all of his hopes in those two connected past pawns. Maybe something good will come out of it. Uh, bishop, uh, uh, sorry, uh, king to b6 pushing the rook back. Rook to a1 and now bishop captures on f3. Trading even further as uh, now uh, Grishuk's pawn structure is ruined and he only has, he's only upper rook. That That's only it. He's only upper rook. So knight to f8, guarding the h7 pawn, and now rook to g8, uh, attacking the, the knight, preparing to attack the pin piece. Uh, we have c4, continuing to push the past pawns, and now bishop to g7. Here, you, you don't have a choice, you have to trade further, knight here to defend the rook, but now rook captures, knight captures, and rook to c1, attacking the c4 pawn, king to b5. So still up a whole rook, but you do have to connect past pawns, it could be could be dangerous. If, if those pawns get here, then it, it could be a problem. Uh, Grisho plays f4, uh, his pawn is also a pass pawn, so why not push it? We have knight to e6, attacking the bishop and the pawn, and bishop to e5, getting rid of both threats. Knight to c5 and now comes king to f1. Sasha starts to bring the king into the game. Knight to d3, attacking the bishop and the rook, but ju just rook to d1. It's not a problem. King to c5, now comes king e2. Uh, we have king to d5 and now rook to h1, saying that, okay, if you capture here, it's not a problem. We can, we can just trade everything. I'm going to capture the h7 pawn and my king uh, and rook will be plenty to, to prevent your two connected pass pawns. So knight back to c5 by Duda, now comes rook captures on h7. We have c3 and here uh, Sasha was very low on time and he didn't like those pawns uh, marching forward too quickly. So he decided to give back some material. Bishop captures on c3 was played, b captures and now rook to c7. Just... Uh, uh, pressuring the knight here. Also, if the knight moves, you might be able to grab the c3 pawn. We have c2 and king to d2, defending. So, what do you play here? Uh, well, you could play a lot of things. For example, knight to c3 check is very interesting, uh, but the problem is you just capture the c2 pawn, so nothing really happens there. If you, if you couldn't capture, then it would be a problem. So, knight to e4 check is played. We have king captures on c2 and the knight captures on f2. So, here it's a rook and pawn against the knight, completely winning for white, but still, the, the stakes are too high, and Duda will give it, all, give it his all. Uh, we have king to e4. Now comes king e2, attacks the knight. Knight g4, and now rook to c4 with check. King f5. Now comes king to f3, knight h2 check, king goes to g2, knight goes back to g4, king g3. Slowly but surely making progress. Uh, knight to e3, attacking the rook, but rook c5 check. King f6, and now king to f3, pushing the knight back. King f5, and now rook to a5. Not wanting your rook anywhere near the knight, so we don't have to calculate all the forks. So here just the rook is on the edge of the board, uh, no, no trickery there. King g6, we have rook to a6 with check, and it was in this position on move 60 that young Krzysztof Duda resigned the game. And now it's Grishuk who takes the lead in the tournament, uh, putting Duda in a must-win situation. So there is one more uh, quick rapid game left. So if Duda is not able to retaliate, it's Grishuk who will win the FIDE Grand Prix. Here you just resign because it's, uh, um, well, uh, slowly but surely white will make progress. Let's say king e4. Knight has to move somewhere, let's say king e7, and now you can even give up the rook for the knight, because after any move by black, you can just capture, capture, and voila, uh, king e5, you have the opposition, you're winning the endgame. 
So yeah, uh, after uh, this rook to a6 check, Duda resigned, and uh, for the first time in the match, Grishuk takes the lead, and it's, uh, well, now it's Duda who's in a very unpleasant position. He has to win the game, otherwise it's game over for him. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank James Dunn, Henry Campbell, Piotr Skowronski, Gokulji, and Tyler Morgan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Definitely continuing the coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix. Uh, and of course, as usual, checking up on your wonderful suggestions. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.